Day three of the Cheltenham Festival, St Patrick's Thursday. The going described as soft, good to soft in places. Seven races on a stellar card, the feature of which was the Paddy Power Stayers Hurdle at 3.30. The first race was a grade one. It was the Turner's Novices Chase over two miles, three furlongs and 168 yards. Mighty Potter, all the rage in the market. The six to four on favourite ahead of Appreciated, three to one. Mark Johnson, your commentator. So they're walking in, making their way around the first fence on the starting chute. All clear is given and they're off for the grade one Turner's Novices Chase over two and a half miles and quite a short run to the first of the 16 fences and Stage Star is the first to begin. He was big at the first fence, a mistake on the outside by James de Burley, who rather landed in a bit of a heap. He's at the moment racing in fourth position. Didn't lose a great deal of ground in the very early stages. They take fence number two. Stage Star Leads there by a couple of lengths. They're all safely over to Balco Coastal, who races in second. Towards the inside, not long till May is in third. James de Burley was much better over fence two than he was over the first, but he's a little bit keen racing up on the outside of Mighty Potter, who also is just slightly over racing, but nothing too drastic in the early stages. Davy Russell attempting, however, to get a bit of cover inside rail position for him. Then there's a break of around about two lengths back to appreciate it and the grey an expected party is the back marker. So they made the descent into the home straight. Four fences now as they come up towards the enclosures. Fence three for stage start. Leads by about two and a half lengths. Skips over it to Balco Coastal who's over in second. Not long till May in third. Mighty Potter has now inherited fourth relegating James de Burley to fifth. Then appreciate it. The leader was very good over that. The leader is stage star. So he's racing on now towards the last two fences in the home straight. Stage star unhurried. Leads by about three lengths. He's not getting any pressure on the lead at the moment to uh, in second place now on the outside not long till May. Balco Coastal now relegated to third as they go over the third fence taken down the home straight. Next was James de Burley racing upon the outside of Mighty Potter and then appreciate it and finally unexpected party. This will be the final fence in a circuit's time and once again all safely over. If you're going to crab Mighty Potter he just slightly dived at that but nothing too serious and at the moment He's racing in fourth position. He's only four lengths off the leader as they race now uphill towards the back straight in the grade one Turner's Novices Chase, the opener on day three of the festival. Stage star and Harry Cobden lead the way to not long till May and Adam Wedge in second place. Two and a half lengths back to Balco Coastal and Nico de Boinville in third position. Mighty Potter, the favorite, Davy Russell in fourth. James de Burley out wide with Daryl Jacob in fifth place. They take the slightly downhill fence. Appreciate it. Paul Townend last but one and Harry Skelton and the expected party still the back markers. And they're now racing a good 10 lengths off this leader who goes towards the water. Stage star has made every yard of the first half of the contest as they go over the water jump. They all jump it well. Closing up now in second, not long till May, racing up on the outside. And then there's a break of a couple of lengths back to Balco Coastal. And this is an open ditch. And again, all safely over. And once again, stage star, the leader, was very quick very nimble, doesn't waste any time in the air as he goes now towards the next one. And again, he jumps it really well. Stage star out in front. At the back of the field, appreciate it. It wasn't quite as clever as one or two of the others. Now they take the dog leg turn, which carries them now on towards fence number 11, which will be the last of the open ditches. Stage star leads by about two and a half lengths, reaching for it in second place, not long till May. Then a line of three, Balco Coastal on the inside of Mighty Potter and still wide is James de Burley. A break then of a further two and a half lengths to appreciate it and as they go over fence number 12 still the back marker is unexpected party so about to swing the turn at the top of the hill next one they take will be the fourth from home in the Turner's novices chase and stage star still leads the way that advantage just over two lengths to not long till May who will jump in second position this time the leader not quite as clever but stage star still has the lead but they're bunching up now snapping away at his heels not long till May racing in second place. 
Balco Coastal to the inside is just in third. Wide is James de Burley, and still covered up is Mighty Potter in a very close fit. This is the third from home, and it is still Stage Star who has got the advantage on the long run now down into the home straight with another two fences to take. Now, not long till May, begins to lay it down to Stage Star. Then in third, James de Burley cutting to the inside. Mighty Potter is in fourth and now ridden by Davy Russell. They're racing down towards the second last, not long till May. On the inside, Stage Star trying to come back, appreciate it, smuggled into the race by Paul Townend. Stay Staying on now in third and has every chance. He just cuts across in front of Jason Burley and then Mighty Potter, who is struggling to try and pick up the final fence. Stage star jumps his way back into the lead. Not long till May towards the near side. Appreciate it on the wide outside. Mighty Potter tries to stay on, but it's Stage Star who is out in front for Harry Cobden and for Paul Nichols. And Stage Star has won the Turners in second, not long till May. Tight for third between on the far side. Appreciate. It, and on the near side, Mighty Potter. Stage Star wins the Turners at 15 to 2 for Harry Cobden and Paul Nichols, beating not long till May, who was 40 to 1 in second. Mighty Potter was a disappointing favourite. He was uh, odds on. He went off four to six, but he never really landed a blow and hung badly to his right on the run-in, and never looked like getting to the front-running Stage Star, who made every yard of the running. It's his second Grade One success as a hurdler. He won the Challo, and here he gives Harry Cobden a welcome winner at the festival, and the first this year for Paul Nichols. Harry Cobden and I were just chatting that we're going to be talking in happier circumstances at least than yesterday after that marvellous ride to win the Turner's Novices Chase with Stage Star. Congratulations, you've had to pick yourself up overnight and deliver that. Yeah, I know, it's amazing, isn't it? Um, full credit to the horse. Uh, you know, I was thinking about the race from probably last night on the way home of what I was going to do on this lad today and it all worked out perfectly anyway. And was it exactly as you'd hoped it would be? Yeah, I just I wanted to be quick over the first couple and just get out in front and try and make it my own race from there, really, and um, managed to get a few breathers in on the way around. He's jumped very well, got over the third last, turned in, saw Adam Wedge come up, sized me on um, the Morgan horse, and, um, yeah, I managed to sit a little bit to the second last, and then he's come up my hands at the last, and... The rest is history, I suppose. Fantastic. I mean, it's just a, a really mature performance from the horse, and he really seemed to come of age when he ran here in January. Yeah, very good. And he's actually, he he he, um, he, he hangs left, you see. Yeah. So, um, like, on the way around, he's, he's hung since the flag's dropped down, but he's one of them where you just try to not pick up the right rein, because once, well, once you start picking that right rein up to keep him straight, you're in a constant battle then. And, um, I don't know, it's just... It's all happened perfectly and it's all gone very, very, as well as I thought anyway. You make it look very easy because I remember you saying, you know, it's probably not obvious, but particularly at Newbury, that was in evidence, wasn't it, his hanging? Yeah, well, look, he did just, you know, around here you've got the odd wing or the rail to just lean on and let him not gallop into it, but use it as sort of a marker rather than you sort of tugging off his mouth. Mm. Um, once you start doing that, you're in a battle from then on, aren't you? And, and then there's curtains, so I um, <laughs> uh, just, yeah, it's all gone very well. And Paul was talking about seeing him as, as a Ryanair horse. Is that the kind of thing that you would like to hear? I'd say he'll come back next year and have a go at that race. I think he'll get further as well. Mm. If he didn't hang as bad, I'd say he'd be a Ladbroke Trophy horse. But um, he's very hot, so I don't know of like a 24-runner handicap where he might not have it his own way. He would be up his street. Mm. He might just be a little graded seven or eight-runner horse where he could buck out, go a gallop early. and uh, Just a lot gets to him, you know. He's quite... Um, He's quite, I suppose he's a little bit fragile in the mind, but he wasn't here today, was not he? Not at all, not, not at all. Your third festival winner, and looking back on yesterday, were you starting to get quite frustrated? Well, I suppose, I mean, I, I've, had, I've had a four-year drought, haven't I? But, I mean, I say to myself every time, I haven't let one go. There's nothing that I've ridden here that I thought should have won or could have won. Um, it's just the simple fact that I don't think I've been on a good enough horse. Um, so, I mean... The good ones are hard to get hold of, aren't they? And when Willie Mullins brings 80 here, <laughs> and Gordon probably has 70, uh, and Paul's a sort of leading trainer in this country, and we're coming with, with 10 to 15, it's a bit demoralising, isn't it? But um, like the good days like this, when it when it pulls off, is uh, the most unbelievable. It's a sign of mental strength, isn't it, to be able to 
cogitate what you've done previously and, and just look forward, which is exactly what you did. All power to you for the rest of the festival. Congratulations, Harry. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. You. And not long till they ran off his face in second for the Turners. Absolutely brilliant, Laurel. Congratulations. Oh, absolutely delighted. I mean, it was a massive step up in grade today. And obviously I felt a bit worried coming here. But look, he'd done everything very easily in the build-up. But I was a bit worried that maybe the track might not suit or the ground might go. Obviously, he'd only won around flat tracks. So I was a little bit concerned. But look, he's run a mighty race. Absolutely delighted with him. So And hopefully there'll be more to come next year as well. And at one point on the home turn, you might have thought, we've got a squeak of winning here. Yeah, I sort of know Wedgie's body language there. He's, you know, see what he was held on to. But yeah, even he said, Jesus, I was getting really excited. <laughs> <laughs> and it's owned by Alan Rogers, who's the next footballer. He's a lunatic, so <laughs> maybe it wasn't a bad thing. <laughs> was, he giving, was he giving it some? Oh, yeah, you know what he's like. <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. And he jumped so brilliantly. I mean, what a lovely performance. Yeah, great performance. Um, he was very bold at a few hours. Oh, Jesus. But you know, again, he's only a novice, so I think there'll be more to come for next year. Well, that's exciting, isn't it? Very exciting, yeah. <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing you here, maybe one along, this time next year. That's the dream with all them big, big trainers. <laughs> that's what we're all here for. Many congratulations. So. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Another Irish bred Cheltenham Festival winner. Contact Irish Purbred Marketing to find yours. Second race on the card was the Potemps Handicap Hurdle. It's over three miles, and the favourite here was Thanks for the Help, who was really well supported for the David Pipe team. He went off at 100 to 30. And they're off for the Potemps Network final handicap hurdle. They have three miles ahead of them. And through the very early stages, Burroughs Park on the wide outside is right up there. Green Book is another one going forward with Bear Gills on the inside as they cross over the first flight of hurdles. They're all safely over with Wakul, the back marker. Takarengo has not picked up the bit at all early and has been ridden along already right at the back of the field. Also towards the rear is Good Time Johnny as they go over flight number two. And down there is Mokka Davasi. Mokka Davasi has fallen at flight number two. Horses quickly up, rider getting to his feet. They quickly go over flight three, and it's Burroughs Park who led them over that flight of hurdles. They're safely over with Takarengo once again being driven away from that flight of hurdles. So now they take the dog leg turn, racing on towards flight number four, and it's Burroughs Park who leads the way to Greenbuck, who races in second. Bear Gills on the inside is in third. The boss's Oscar has now taken fourth place. Racing on that one's inside is Glimpse of Gala, who races in around about fifth place with the changing man towards that one's outside of making ground as they went over that particular flight of hurdles, which they all jumped safely. Level never ending was just ridden away from that flight, wasn't too fluent over it. And now Ned Fox and Burroughs Park have got a clear break over the field as now they begin to freewheel down the hill on the long run towards flight number five. It's Burroughs Park who's clear now by eight lengths to in second Bear Gills towards the outside Green Book is racing in third. The boss's Oscar is in fourth. The changing man towards the outside is in fifth position, followed in sixth by Entire who makes ground. He's racing up on the outside of Hector Javalex. On the inside is Glimpse of Gala. Then out wide is Brandy McQueen who's never been too far off the speed. Then Captain Morgs who races on the inside of Salvazor Ziggy. Then working just a little bit wider to these. They go towards the next flight is Risk and Roll with Mill Green Another one taken quite wide as they went over that flight. There was a mistake at that flight by Captain Morgs. He may have been put off by Glimpse of Gala, who was the one who flattened that flight of hurdles. Wakul is still the back marker. Takarengo is still being driven. Good time Johnny still right out the back of the field. Maxim, another one who hasn't got involved early. And neither two as thanks for the help. He's racing in the last third of the field, but going well enough at this point. He's racing alongside Itchy Feet. And then Mill Green, who's just been shuffled back slightly as they race on now up towards the flight, which were the last in the circuit's time in the Potemps. And the leader coming back to the field is Burroughs Park. 
So it's Burroughs Park who is out in front to Bear Gills just racing in second with on the inside Glimpse of Gala who will rise in third position. The boss of Oscar just jumped past that one. Then in fifth is Green Book who race on the outside of the Changing Man who races in sixth. In seventh is Hector Javalex. Then towards the outside is Salvador Ziggy. He's been followed towards the inside by Captain Morgs who makes ground. Then level never ending just had to be taken off heels. On tire is next in the field. Then Walking on Air. Walking on Air races alongside Brandy McQueen as they Take the run into the back straight. Coltor hugs the inside rail. He's been followed by Risk and Roll. Then the Grey, thanks for the help, who's still racing slightly worse than midfield. On that one's outside is Itchy Feet, followed next by Maxim. Then towards the inside is Good Time Johnny. And then Takarengo, who's still towards the rear of the field together with Wakul. They go over the first flight taken down the back straight. And it's Burroughs Park who has got the lead over Bear Gills, who races in second position. The boss is Oscar towards the inside and the red of green book towards the outer, followed by the changing man, and then Brandy McQueen on the wide outside as they went over that next flight of hurdles, which good time Johnny wasn't fluent and was got a shake of the reins for his pains. So now they're racing on towards the third flight, taken down the back straight, and it was just on the inside. Burroughs Park, who had the lead over Bear Gills in second. Green book on the outside is in third. The boss's Oscar is now in fourth. Salvador Ziggy has made ground now to share fifth position with the changing man on his inside, and then the orange of Brandy McQueen around the outer. Antoyer is next, followed by Mill Green, and then Risk and Roll. Glimpse of Gala being ridden and losing ground. Level never ending is next in the field. Captain Morgs and walking on air. Then thanks for the help, who's still covered up towards the inside, but don't jump that flight well. Itchy Feet is next, followed by Maxim, another one yet to be put in the race. He's now moving up on the outside of Coltor, and now Wakul has passed one or two. Takarengo has never gone a yard, and on the inside is Good Time Johnny. So now they begin to make the turn down inside the final five furlongs of the Potemps Network final, and they've just got two more flights of hurdles to take. Burroughs Park on the inside and Bear Gills, these are still the first two. Green Buck is right there with the boss's Oscar towards the inside. Next in the field is after him, level never ending, and then making ground, Brandy McQueen on the wide outside, together with Mill Green. Thanks for the help, has now switched out quite wide. He's on the tail of Salvador Ziggy, trying to make ground as they go over the second from home and as they now begin to make the run back towards home it's Green Buck who has gone on in the hands of Charlie Deutsch. So it's Green Buck but they're stacking up in behind. Bear Gills now second towards the inner. Then on the outside Brandy McQueen. Next in the field towards the outside is Mill Green who is picking up followed by thanks for the help and also Maxim is right there with every chance. Itchy Feet tries to stay on towards the grandstand side. They're racing down inside the final full and a half and down towards the final flight. It's Green Buck now tackled by Mill Green towards the near side. Maxim looking for racing room. Brandy McQueen is right there. Thanks for the help. Is the Grey who's got every chance. Salvador Ziggy over on the far side just wanders. Then level never ending as they go over the final flight. It's Mill Green who now has the lead. In second, Salvador Ziggy. Then Brandy McQueen over on the far side now. It's good time Johnny. And good time Johnny has taken it up for Liam McKenna. Racing up towards the line. It is good time Johnny who takes up attempts. Salvador Ziggy in second. Mill Green maybe third again in this race. Green but just in behind him followed by Walking On Air and On Toyer. A win for Good Time Johnny at 9-1 to one for Liam McKenna and Tony Martin. Salvador Ziggy second at 10-1. to one. Mill Green third at 22-1. to one. And Green Book fourth at 40s. This is a remarkable performance from Good Time Johnny. He was slowly away, never seemingly travelling very well. He didn't jump particularly well either. And he had a lot to do coming down the hill. But... He picked up the bridle coming down to the last and ran on really strongly despite meeting interference and ran out to a ready winner from Salvador Ziggy in second and Mill Green third for Tony Martin. Many congratulations, your seventh festival success. You must have been worried for most of the way around though, surely? Yeah, I was very worried. I just towered that four or five lengths too far back. But um, once I seen him on the bridle and he still hadn't committed till uh, off the last bend, I was... Happy that we'd be there. I was just hoping they hadn't gone too far. Yeah, I mean, Liam was saying the instructions were, you know, not to hit the front too soon, but he was always not where he wanted to be because there were problems everywhere. Instructions were to hit the front too soon, <laughs> <laughs> not to take off too early at the bottom. That was all. Uh, warn him, like, you know, if you're in four, five, six lengths, turn in even seven or eight, you'll, you'll finish if you're on the bridle coming down the hill. And fair play to him, you know, he was reminding me of Ruby here in Dundery one time. The horse just hadn't the speed or the pace to travel for the until he hit the tourney mm. and he was always struggling on the back foot but Liam hadn't committed him and then as I say he had enough to come home when he did commit him off the last bend. Where did you start to believe? 
halfway to the last. Oh yeah, halfway to the last. So you could hear me down here. So, <laughs> could we? You oh, give it some, did you? The boys in the stand nearly had to get it off. <laughs> so, um, oh yeah, halfway to the last. When I seen him pick up there at the second last fence, I said, oh yeah. I just hope they're not gone too far. So at the last, I was happy. And it's your seventh festival winner, your first is Rivage Door in the, the cross country in 2015? Yeah, we, look, we had a lot of lean years, things didn't go the John Best, uh, but a lot of things. And uh, fortunately enough, we're back with a few nice horses now. But it'd be lovely to get a few nice proper grade one horses again, they're like a beneficial than them and hog warrior horses like that. But it's, uh, we won't complain with the few we have, this lad's all right and a few more like him, you know, so hopefully a few nice races to be won with them. And when you were saying the lean years, what did you put those down to? Ah, uh, we'd uh, <laughs> you'd rather not know. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> rather not know, but look, that's life. Uh, everyone has the hiccups, but you're looking about tipping away grand, and things are good now at the moment. And um, what do you think of young Liam's ride? Because he hasn't had the most straightforward of seasons, has he? He's been battling injury. When he got back to win the Galway hurdle, he then had another injury. Yeah, he was out for four months, I think, prior to Galway. But look, he's with me three mornings a week. He's a very capable rider. Always does what he's asked, you know, and as I said, that's the important thing. If he does what he's asked, then it's my fault from there. But very good rider. I can't understand how come he's um, hasn't lost his claim at the age. But as you say, he had a lot of troubles with injury and just was unfortunate enough not to be in bigger yards in the right places with like a garden or really to get the kickstart they deserved when he was cl claiming. Like, you know, lads ride a few winners and they get to them bigger yards and away they go. But fair play, he's been with me for a long time now and I'd never look past him if I was needing a claimer, you know. It was a ride of great maturity, I think, given oh, what went wrong. Absolutely on brilliant. Oh, he was there with me this morning at the last hurdle, and we just a little chat with Ruby. And um, you know, things that are like that are vital just to put confidence into a lad like that. And um, what, what, what do you, what does this success mean to you then, being back in the winners' enclosure? I'm sure, it means everything. Like you know, it's the same as going to the World Cup. You know, it's the same as you whatever you're doing. You know, it's the Olympics of, the, of horse racing. And um, as I say, it's absolutely brilliant. And the people that own the horse are just Magic people, Eamon and Carmel Shields, Niall Riley, Charlie Gavigan. They're with me from the start, like they had beneficial here, good horse won the, uh, the two and a half mile novice. And uh, Northern Lines had some great years with them. And more importantly, great fun, went through tough times and got out the other side and were always there behind you. But absolutely wonderful people, and they're the people you need in racing. And finally, weren't you quibbling with a handicap mark going, Sash? You've got to be well handicapped to win like that, weren't you? Um, I thought you were in my interview with my colleague Tom Stanley. Oh, look, Crouch. <laughs> Crouch. Yeah, look, I, I thought, told him I thought we had a great chance. I won't say we were well handicapped for what he'd done. He wasn't really, but as I say, today everything was geared towards today. Unfortunately, love, it worked out right. Okay. It did absolutely work. Many congratulations. Well done, Tony. Lydia, thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Bye -bye. Another Irish bred Cheltenham Festival winner. Contact Irish Thoroughbred Marketing to find yours. The grade one, the Ryanair chase was next. Two and a half miles was the trip and Shishkin all the rage in the market. The even money favourite for the Nicky Henderson team. And they're off. The Ryanair Chase Grade 1 is run over the extended two and a half miles, 17 fences ahead of them, and it is Chacun Poussoir who will lead them towards the first on the inside of Envoi Hélène. As they get over the first fence, the back marker is Galore. Shishkin out quite wide, also racing towards the rear of the field. They've gone pretty hard in the early stages. Chacun Poussoir takes them over fence number two, followed by French Dynamite, who is over in second. Then Envoi Hélène towards the outside of Fury Road in third and fourth, with Hitman towards towards the inside. As they cross over the tracks, Blue Lord is next in the field. They're already at fence number three, led by Chacun Poussoir. At the moment, Shishkin only has two behind. Janadil is last but one, and Galore is the back marker. He's racing around about seven lengths off the leader, who is Danny Mullins on Chacun Poussoir as they make the run down the hill. On the run now towards the four fences taken in the home straight. So it is Jacques Ampoussoir who leads the Ryanair chase field, racing in second, French Dynamite towards his outside. And then Envoi Hélène, who races around the outside of Hitman. Envoi Hélène quite keen in the hands of Rachel Blackmore in the very early stages, Rachel in the red colors with the white sash. 
on the wide outside is Fury Road and then Shishkin. Blue Lord run on the inside of Janadil. Shishkin just went a little bit left-handed over that fence, gave a nudge to Janadil. The back marker is Galore. On now towards the next, which is fence number five. As they come to it, Chacan Poursois had a lead of just over a length. Two in second, French Dynamite still keen on the outside. Envoi Alain, who races a length and a half back in third. Then Hitman sticking to the inside. Fury Road is out wide. Janadel and Shishkin racing together. And then towards the inner is Blue Lord. And Galore is the back marker as they go over the fence, which will be two out next time around. French Dynamite uh, hit that fence very, very hard and part of the birch. So on now towards fence number seven, the last in a circuit's time. And Chacan Poursois leads the Ryanair field as they went over it. Shishkin again jumped markedly away to the left. That's not the first time he has done it. Again, he gave a broadside there to Janadil, who raced on his inside. But Shishkin has been awkward at at least a couple of fences coming up the home straight. So it is Chacan Poursois who has got the lead to in second French Dynamite, who made that mistake at the previous fence. And then on the inside is Hitman and then Envoi Alain. Shishkin covered up between horses by Nico de Boinville. Then Fury Road has taken quite wide. Blue Lord, and then on the inside is Janadil, and Galore is still the back marker. They go over the first fence down the back, and Janadil took part of the fence with him. He hit that very hard. Going now on towards the water, which is fence number nine. They're at halfway in the Ryanair, and Chacan Poursois still has got the lead. Over the water they go to French Dynamite over in second, Hitman in third. In fourth position is Envoi Alain on the outside of Shishkin, who's creeping closer. Fury Road, and then Blue Lord, and this is an open ditch, and Chacan Poursois had to reach for it. He was scopy enough to still have a lead of a length and a half over French Dynamite in second. Hitman to the inside in third. Another plain fence is the 13th. Hitman hit that fence. He paddled his way through that fence. Hind legs first. Still Galore at the back of the field. Fury Road has now been shuffled back to last but one. An open ditch now is in their sights. It's fence number 12 going to the top of the hill. Chacan Poursois stood a mile off that. Really, really had to stretch to get to the other side. To French Dynamite in second. Then Envoi Alain on the outside of Hitman and Shishkin who races in fifth position. He's only three lengths off the leader. The next fence going up the hill, Chacan Poursois, a mistake. Janadil not fluent, neither to Galore at the back of the field. He's ridden along, so too is Fury Road. So now they begin to make the slight descent on towards the fourth from home in the Ryanair. And Chacan Poursois and French Dynamite are still the first two. A mistake in third by Envoi Alain, his first significant error towards the outside. Hitman is racing in fourth position. Shishkin is in fifth. Blue Lord is in sixth. Janadil is in seventh. Fury Road is in eighth. And Galore has always been ninth and last, but he's still there pitching, racing now towards a third from home. Chacan Poursois by high for length. A desperate mistake by Shishkin. Hit that fence very, very hard. Good recovery by Nico de Boinville, but now he's been shuffled back in the field. He will make the turn racing in only sixth place. So they begin to make the turn back towards home. Two more to take in the Ryanair chase. Chacan Poursois by a neck. French Dynamite on the outside, Envoi Alain still travelling powerfully towards the outside, Blue Lord is staying on, Shishkin looking for racing room, so too is Hitman, then Janadil towards the wide outside, on the run down now towards the final fence, Envoi Alain goes on for Rachel Blackmore, French Dynamite on the inside, Hitman and then Shishkin only fourth, over the final fence, Envoi Alain by about a length to Hitman who will now challenge in second, back in third on the inside, French Dynamite, Shishkin looks held in fourth, Fourth. They've got another 150 yards to go. Envoi Alain is out in front and he's going to win at the festival for the third time. The Ryanair goes to Envoi Alain. Shishkin rallied, may have just got second. Hitman and then French Dynamite followed home by Galore on the inside of Fury Road. Envoy Allen at 13 to 2 for Rachel Blackmore and Henry de Bromhead beat Shishkin, the even money favourite. Hitman third at 22 to 1 and 9 ran. This was a two and three quarter length success for Envoy Allen, his third win at the Cheltenham Festival. And he was absolutely brilliant on this occasion. He travelled strongly. He got an uninterrupted trip, uh, which some others didn't. And he ran on very strongly in the closing stages. Shishkin, uh, the favourite, wasn't going early on, jumping to his left. He was crowded as well. He made a number of mistakes and ran, ran remarkably well to be second.
Rachel Blackmore was on board Envoy LN, who's just won the Ryanair. And we were just saying he was travelling everywhere, wasn't he? Yeah, he travelled and jumped really well today. Um, I thought early on he was he was in my hands for quite a while. It just took me a while to settle him. But then he switched off, going past the stands, and uh, he was lovely then. He was lobbing away then. So, yeah, and I was able to fill him up. Um, down three out he was uh yeah he put in a phenomenal performance but i don't think it's a surprise to anyone like he's an extremely talented horse and uh it was just fantastic that henry got that day at him today and uh great as well ryanair so kind to to name the mayor's and officer hurdle after jack uh so it was such a kind gesture by them yes. so uh delighted to be able to to win their race today it was a bit rough for some people in the race was it for you uh uh, no, I actually got a got a nice clear passage. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I I didn't find too much problem anywhere. Yeah, I was fine in that way. And what do you think was the key to this excellent performance? I mean, he's run well at Chatham before. We know he's won a bumper. He's won a Ballymore. But he's also run well in defeat here. Yeah, look, uh, you know, he was so disappointing the last day. You know, going to Kempton, we were really really happy with him. Um, and he was just equally as good coming here today. So uh, we're just hoping the last day was just whatever whatever was wrong. He just didn't perform. But, uh, you know, we've been really happy with him all season. Um, Davey Roach uh, does a lot of work with him and he's been really, really happy with him. So, uh, yeah, look, uh, it's a great team effort down there in Nakeen. And, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a, a tough year for everyone. And I think everyone in the yard has, has, put, in, has in, put, put in good graft. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to be uh, involved with them all. Henry has done so well to get his team in such good order. I mean, Captain Guinness yesterday was marvellous. Honeysuckle obviously goes without saying. Muscada as well. Now we're all thinking about a blue tar. Yeah, look, you know, he obviously hasn't had the most ideal preparation coming into the race, but he's working really well. Um, uh, and, yeah, look, we're, we're looking forward to him. Well, they couldn't be in better form, but there's more to do today. So best of luck for that and many congratulations. Thanks, Lydia. Thank, Thank you. you. Henry, well done. You your horses are in some nick this week. Well they're done. They're running really well. Yeah, they're great. Look, it's it's uh, we we uh, you know we've had a yeah phenomenal week so far, and uh, just he was brilliant. Rachel was amazing on him. He just jumped and travelled. He made one little mistake at the top of the hill. Other than that, his jumping was exceptional, and he was just always tanking. Thanks a million. Did, you, did uh, you come here with, with this horse with confidence this week? Oh, sure, I never go anywhere with confidence, you know that. But I was so confident going to Kempton, and I, I just, I swear, I still don't know. Thanks, Tommy. I still don't know what, um, what happens, you know. But look, it's brilliant to see him in such form and, you know, to show how good he really is. And yeah, I'm delighted with him, yeah. And, and do you feel distance wise, I mean, have you found it, or would you still be tempted in the future? We know he can go back over three. Well, he won over three at Down Royal. You know, I'd say if APT wasn't um, yeah. if APT wasn't in the Gold Cup, we'd probably be going for that. But it seemed once Alaho was out, it seemed the right race to go for. Thanks, Tara. Thanks a million. Yeah. Well done earlier. Thanks. How is APT? He seems good. He seems good. They all seem better now, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. But but, be... but that's it. You go into a, into a, a Gold Cup tomorrow, and I know there's there's more besides with the Bears novice later, etc. But you you must just be full of confidence with with everything that's running. Oh, sure. Look, we're delighted. You know, now plenty haven't run as well as well, but yeah. you know, you get that, and we're just so lucky to have the horses we have and the support we get. And Henry, it's well done. Delighted Thank for you. Very Thanks much. for listening. They've had two years of kind of expecting it with Alaho to win the Ryanair and now Chiefly Park said have won it three years in a row but with a more surprising horse in Envoy Allen. Richard Thompson from Chiefly Park said is here. Sorry to interrupt everybody. Many congratulations. What was that like? Oh, that was amazing. I mean, Envoy Allen has been, as you know, He's, won, he's been a double winner at Cheltenham before today. He, he fell two years, well, three years ago, was it? Two years ago. And today he's come back and won that Ryanair. I mean, we just can't believe that. Beat, beat Shiskin, you know, who he really th thought would win today. So it's incredible. And, you know, that's three wins in a row with Alaho having won it twice. Once Alaho was out of the race, could you possibly dream that you'd be back in the winners? No chance. No, we thought he'd run a decent race, but not, not. I mean, you know, maybe finish in the first three, but not win it. I mean, that's incredible, particularly after the last two years, you know, having won it. You know. Yeah, absolutely. But well, as you were watching the race, you must have thinking, hang on a minute, he's travelling really well. well. As the race as the race developed, of course, I was starting to think, yeah, things are starting. Yeah, he's, he's in the he's in the shake up. He was in the shake up, and uh, of course, with two out, two two fences out, then uh, you're thinking, well, he's, he's definitely in with a chance here. But it's still, you still couldn't quite believe it until he came over the last and then jumped off, jumped away from the the field, you know, and then really won it well, you know. Did you give it some? I certainly did, 100%, <laughs> totally. You got, you got to a Cheltenham, haven't you? And what has Henry said to you? Because he's got his team in such fine form here. 
Oh, well, Henry just said he was in good, he was in good form coming into it. But of course, one was always cautious because of he's been a bit erratic the last couple of years. But uh, no, he was Henry was, you know, saying the horse is in good, good, good shape. So we, ha we hope for a decent run, but not as maybe as good as this, you know. It feels a lot like redemption for the horse, really, doesn't 100%. it? hundred percent. I mean, this is the horse that was a second coming three or four years ago when he won the bumper here and the Ballymore. And of course, today's just fantastic to come back and win the run there, you know. Absolutely brilliant. I'll let you go Thank to the you. winners' enclosure Thank and enjoy you. it. Thanks, Thanks so much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. It's another Tattersall's National Hunt winner. Paddy Power Stayers Hurdle was next. The feature event of the day, and the favourite here was Tihupu at nine to four for the Gordon Elliott team. And they're off, and towards the outside, home by the lead claims the early lead. Dashiell Drasher towards the inside. Flooring Porter now goes on between them. Flooring Porter, the dual winner, goes on as they prepare to rise at the first of 12 flights of the Paddy Power Stayers Hurdle. Flooring Porter, Dashiell Drasher, home by the Lee with the first three. And at the moment, the two French Raiders are last and last but one. Gold Tweet is last and Henri Lafasseur is last but one as they go now towards flight number two. Flooring Porter by about a length and a half over Dashiell Drasher, who took that flight in second. Home by the Lee is in third. Then there's a break of about four lengths to Ashdale Bob, racing on the inside of Cider Burley as they go over flight number three. Classical Dream was next, followed by Tihupo, who raced on the outside of Paisley Park. Then Blazing Carl, Henri Lafasseur, and finally Gold Tweet. At the moment, racing around about 15 lengths off the leader, who is the dual champion, Flooring Porter, as they go now towards the flight taken at the top of the hill. This will be flight number four. Flooring Porter clear in the hands of Danny Mullins as they rise at that flight and get terribly high to Dashiell Drasher, who took it in second position. And then home by the Lee is in third. He's now come back to the rest of the field, who are headed by Ashdale Bob, who races just in fourth towards the inside as they go into the downhill turn. Cider Burley is next. Then there's a break of five lengths to Classical Dream. Just trying to close up now on the flat. And then Paisley Park on the inside of Blazing Carl. Tihupo in no hurry. Neither to Henri Lafasseur or Gold Tweet as now they race down the hill and on towards flight number five. In the Paddy Power Stayers Hurdle, the leader, Flooring Porter. Flooring Porter by just over two lengths to Dashiell Drasher in second. Home by the Lee, a little wider, racing in third. Then Cider Burley on the outside of Ashdale Bob, who took that in fourth and fifth places. Classical Dream is next. He's then being followed by Blazing Carl to Hoopo on that one's outside. Towards the inner is Paisley Park, racing in advance of Henri Lafasseur, and Gold Tweet is still the back marker. So they come up the home straight for the first time, not yet at halfway in the Paddy Power Stayers hurdle. And Flooring Porter still has a two-length break over Dashiell Drasher in second. Now nearly three lengths back to home by the Lee, who is racing in third position. Cider Burley has now taken a clear fourth. Ashdale Bob is in fifth. And then a further three lengths back to the others who are now headed by Classical Dream. And a mistake there at that flight by home by the Lee. Very bad mistake took off in third place. He's now been relegated to fifth. So they make the run through the halfway point and it's Flooring Porter and Danny Mullins who still lead. Rex Dingle, Dashiell Drasher racing in second. Saïd Berlay and Mark Walsh have now moved into third. Ashdell Bob is in fourth. Home by the Lee in fifth. Classical Dream is in sixth. Blazing Carl is in seventh. To the inside, Paisley Park is racing in eighth. Henri Lafasseur is in ninth. Diopo is in tenth towards the outside. And still, Johnny Sharon has gold tweet at the back of the field as they go over flight number seven, the first flight taken down the back straight. And a slight injection of pace here from Danny Mullins on Flooring Porter as they went down the back straight. And that's uh, now giving him a clear advantage. He's open up that lead to five lengths with just quickening it up down the back. Flooring Porter comes to neck, jumped it well, much better than his nearest two pursuers, Dashiell Drasher and also Sire de Burley. With home by the Lee, recovering from that earlier mistake on the outside of Ashdale Bob as they go over the third down this line of flights of hurdles. Paisley Park still at the
the back of the field and now being ridden along for the first time by Aidan Coleman. He's racing at the back together with Gold Tweet and now they take the dog leg turn. They're now making the run on towards the third from home. And Flooring Porter now being reeled in once again by Dashiell Drasher in second. Ashdale Bob on the outside of Sire de Berlay, home by the lead towards the outside, just been niggled along in fifth position. Classical Dream will jump in sixth, but he was out jumped by Blazing Carl around his outside. Then Tiupo, who's been given a very patient ride so far. Paisley Park has now claimed a couple of places once again. He's gone by Henri Lefasseur, and still the back marker, as he's been throughout, is Gold Tweet. So now they begin to make the turn at the top of the hill inside the final five furlongs now of the Paddy Power Stayers Hurdle, and it's the dual winner, Flooring Porter, who still has the lead and still travelling powerfully in in the hands of Danny Mullins. To the outside is home by the Lee. To the inside, Dashiell Drasher. A break of just over two lengths to Ashdale Bob, who races in fourth. Blazing Carl on the inside, Sire de Berlay, and on the outside, Tihupo makes ground in the hands of Davy Russell. Over the second from home, and Flooring Porter did not jump that well, but he still has the lead over Dashiell Drasher in second. Home by the Lee, around the outside, still creeping into it is Tihupo, who's now about to take fourth. Blazing Carl makes a copycat move to his inside. Sire de Berlay then towards the inner. They've kicked clear of Ashdale Bob, and then Paisley Park down now towards the final flight and towards the near side. It it is Flooring Porter who grabs the rail. Dashiell Drasher, though, has got the lead. A full and a half to go. Dashiell Drasher has the lead over Flooring Porter and then Tihupo. Sire de Berlay staying on towards the far side. The final flight in the stairs. Dashiell Drasher still has the lead. He's got a host of the Irish right on his heels on the far side. Sire de Berlay on the near side. Tihupo. It's now Sire de Berlay who goes to lead and he will win for the third time in the festival. Side of LA wins for Mark Walsh over Dashiell Drasher and Tupo close for second and third and also close for fourth between Flooring Porter and home by the lead. Saïd Uberle wins the Paddy Power Stairs Hurdle at 33 to 1 from Tehupu, the 9 to 4 favourite, and Dashiell Drasher was third at 40 to 1. The result uh, was amended by the stewards, reversing the second and third. Dashiell Drasher just finishing second ahead of Tehupu, but they deemed that uh, Dashiell Drasher had interfered with Tehupu and they reversed those places. Saïd Uberle loves the Cheltenham Festival. This is his third win at it. He causes a shock. But he travelled well, he jumped pretty well too, and he won nicely in the end under Mark Walsh. I was worried that Mark Walsh wasn't get here, going to get here for the festival uh, with the season he's had with injury. But here he is and has delivered the Stayers Hurdle winner inside de Burley. Many congratulations. Were you expecting that? Because I certainly wasn't. Not particularly, no, but he, he's a horse that loves the course. And Gordon had him in serious form. He just said to me, go, well, you know, how to ride him by now? Go out and do your own thing. And looked, I went to right go gallop and I was actually surprised with how well he travelled. Usually he's on and off the rail, but he was really late today. He travelled travelled great, jumped great the whole way, way around. And... Uh, really stuck his head down when I wanted him up the hill. Dual Potemps winner, runner-up in this race before, now he's won it at the age of 11. What an extraordinary horse. Yeah, sure, I hope he comes back again next year. He might, <laughs> he might have another go at it, yeah, but look, he's a great little horse. He loves this place, and uh, Gordon had him in, in serious form, and look, I'm just lucky to be riding him. And how about you? You've had your struggles with injury this season. Back to the DRF, worried a winner, next day back in hospital, only got back this week. You, you must be thinking, goodness, you know, this, this is it, but what an extraordinary season I've had. Yeah, it's just the, the ups and downs of racing, yeah. On top of the world one, one minute and then you're on the ground yeah. getting kicked around the place. So look. Quite I'm, literally at the WRC yeah, Festival. I'm, I'm lucky enough to be back now. I just I made it back. A lot of help from a lot of people. So it's great to be back for the festival. Who helped you to get back? Oh, sure, the doctors, Adrian McGoldrick and Jennifer Poo in Ireland. And my, my physio at home, John Butler, they all pieced me back together and got me here. So I'm very thankful to them. And was there a worry that you weren't going to make it at one point? Uh, yeah, kind of two and a half weeks, three weeks away. I was a bit worried. But as I said, they all, they all helped me get through it. So grateful to them. Well, it's great to see you here. Even better to see you in the Winners Enclosure with your eighth festival success. Many congratulations, Mark. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Roger. A third winner of the week for Gordon Elliott with Sire de Berlier. Festival standing dish, won two per temp, second in the stairs, and now he's won it at the age of 11. Extraordinary horse. Yeah, look, he's a great horse, so he is. You know, he, you know he's, he doesn't do a whole lot at home and never fusses himself too much. That's probably why he's still able to keep going at this level at 11. But uh, look, it's great. Um, 
great to train a, a nice winner for JP. We're absolutely delighted. And earlier this season, I'll be honest with you, I thought the horse had lost his spark. Was there any a point, ever a point where you thought that? Uh, look, we, we, we knew he was a good form, he was working well. But um, we're just thrilled to choose a player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got the one two now. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Good, yeah, first, sec first and second, so it's great. Um, yeah, no, looks the horse are running well all week. I know we've only had three winners. Not only I shouldn't say that. I sound greedy, but. Uh, you know, um, we have a lot of seconds and all our sort of wells are absolutely thrilled. And we should mention to you, has now been promoted to, to second. Yeah. I mean, Davy said that he, he ran really well and he felt that Dashiell Drasher was just getting in the way of him and the stewards are obviously in the, in the same mind. Yeah, I didn't see the rerun of it, but look, he ran a good race, he was second, obviously. Um, they were probably, you know, maybe, uh, I'd, say, I'd say sort of the world had the perfect position the whole way. Um, and I'd say, uh, yeah, it's great. And how do you keep him sweet at home, side of it? To be honest, uh, I've not much got to do with it, only giving the orders and the gallop in the morning. The girls look after him. Uh, you know, I've got a great team at home. Um, Elise, my niece, uh, she, she, she led him up and she looks after him. So, you know, great for her and great for the whole team at home. You know, we all work very hard and, you know, I'm only the name on the licence, so it's, I'm, I'm just thrilled. He must be a firm favourite in the yard, the amount of years he's been around and doing this kind of thing. Yeah, he is. He, he just, he, he's like the, the child's pony in the yard. You know, he's, <laughs> he's, he's quiet, anyone can ride him out and we're looking at him. And when you think about the second as well and think about the age he is compared to Sider Burley, he's only going to come back and get better, isn't he? Most definitely, yes. Good. That was, a, that, was a, that was a definite answer. You were saying with your first winner of the week, Jazzy Matty, you were proud to have equaled, uh, it's gone one past Martin Pipe, who's your great mentor. Yeah. You know, and now you're, you're sailing on it. So the week is going of, well. I'm, I'm too ahead of him now, so I'm sure I'll get a message off from now in a while. No, listen, uh, Martin Pipe is one of my heroes in life. Um, so I've been very close with all the pipes. They're, they've, they've, uh, they've been good to me since I was young, and uh, you know I love them to bits. It's great to hear they're still rooting for you as well. Uh, there's more. There's more to do. What did, what are your reflections on, on Mighty Potter, by the way? In the... I, I didn't think he ever got into a rhythm. Maybe he just doesn't like travelling over here. He never looked the same horse as he was the last day. Look, he didn't disgrace himself, and he done a few things wrong. So uh, look, we we'll go back to the drawing board. Did you know horse racing? It's uh, if it was easy, to do it every day, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, you're making it look fairly easy, this meeting. Many congratulations. Good luck for the rest of it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. The Magnus Plate Handicap Chase was next up. It was over two and a half miles. Thoroughly competitive. That's all right, Gino. Five to one favourite ahead of So Scottish. 11 to two. They're off this time for the Magnus Plate Handicap Chase. Stolen Silver driven forward on the inside. Call Cody will definitely want a piece of the early action as they jump the first. A very erratic jump from Jevry at the back of the field just behind Mars Harper. And it's Call Cody, last year's winner, that gallops on into the lead. From Stolen Silver, right there is Seddon in third place. They're all over the second fence. So Scottish in the J.P. McManus green and yellow hoops is just uh, chasing the front three or four. We're then bitter towards the inside wider out in a blue cap Il Rodoto and Frero Bombu is very handy with the white blaze on the outside they're followed by Oton Couleur and then shake them up Harry and two for gold Warlords on the inside followed by Fugitive and Celebre Dalen and then Midnight River and Iscaria 10 out wide a couple of lengths to Born by the Sea then Dats all right Gino and Marvel de Cerisi Chevry is further back from Hereditary Rule and then behind those Mars Harper still as they race around a left hand, about a greatness and champagne gold are the back markers as they now swing back towards the grandstand and on towards the next plane fence. And Cool Cody loves it here at Cheltenham, jumps it well from Seddon in second place, Stolen Silver in third on the inside, followed by So Scottish and Embittered and Oton Couleur, Ferro Bombu on the outside, Il Rodoto and Shake em Up Harry. Out very wide is two for gold in the noseband. And they're followed by Warlord further back from Fugitive, Celeb Delen, still in the midfield just behind Shake em Up, Harry from Midnight River. Then Marvel de Cerisi on the inside, that's all right, Gino, Iscaria 10 and Hereditary Rule. Mars Harper still amongst the bat markers, along with uh, Born by the Sea and Jevry and Champagne Gold as they landed over the necks and bow to greatness on the inside. 
onto the fence in front of the enclosures then with a circuit to go in the Magnus plate and it's called Cody out there medals blazing from Seddon and Frero Bombu and Stolen Silver on the rail followed by Sco Scottish behind these in about fifth place with Stolen Silver from two for Golden Hill Rodoto then embittered in the maroon and white jacket on the inside of the white sleeve shake em up Harry Oton Couleur in the black and yellow checks behind those from Celeb Dalen and Fugitive in a purple jacket. Warlord, one of the greys round the inside from Midnight River in red. Then Marvel de Cerisi as they turn now into the back straight from Dats All Right Gino. Iscaria 10 is on the outside. Jevry, bow to greatness. And then Born by the Sea clearing the next plane fence from Mars Harper and Champagne Gold is the back marker. On now towards the water jump taken just once in this race and it's cool cody that leads the way cool cody comes in to take it and jumps it well and they all stream over the water jump cool cody and adam wedge setting the target here frero bamboo two for gold remain handy with seddon now an open ditch and then so scottish who was well over in fifth place and they are followed by oton couleur and stolen silver and bitter just fighting for a bit of racing room past a little gate there as they race towards this next plane fence getting a little strung out behind bow to greatness struggling warlord champagne gold ridden to little avail as they now climb the hill towards the final open ditch Call Cody, Seddon, Odon Couleur made ground on the inside, the top way, jumping this ditch. Then uh, on the outside, Frero Bambu. And they are trapped by So Scottish, who's always been in the leading five or six from Il Rodoto and Harry Cobden. Then behind these two for gold and shaker, um, up Harry. Midnight River on the outside of Celeb Dalen and Embittered and Fugitive is pretty well in touch at this stage. They reach the top of the hill. Behind those then uh, is Marvel de Cerisi making a little bit of progress with Jevry. A gap of three links to hereditary rule. Down towards the next and call Cody. Jumping away to the right but jumping cleanly over that one. All safely over Iscaria 10 has been pulled up. Down the hill towards the third last and call Cody. Shadowed by Sedum. The white blaze Frero Bambu. Then so Scottish. Il Rodoto. Shake em up Harry. In the yellow sleeves Oton Couleur on the inside. Fugitive getting a bit closer over three out and they are chased by Jevry and then behind these Marvel de Cerisi with the white blaze continues to stay on and then out wide is Midnight River about to run round the final turn with two fences left to jump. Cool Cody now joined by Seddon. Seddon comes there strongly. In behind them is Shake em Up Harry from So Scottish over on the far side Odon Couleur with every chance coming with a promising run under Michael O'Sullivan and Fugitive two away to the left in the purple jacket over two out. Seddon landed in the lead from shake em up Harry and here now unleashed his fugitive on the near side Oton Couleur on the far side Seddon from fugitive Seddon's going to lift off just ahead of fugitive and now they're going to run up the hill Seddon and Ben Harvey chased home by fugitive on the near side Sean Bowen but Seddon is fending him off it's Seddon that goes two lengths two and a half three lengths clear of fugitive and racing up towards the line it's another Irish winner and it's going to be Seddon Seddon scores from his second fugitive tight for the Miners shake him up, Harry racing in between the strong finishing Jevry and Oton Couleur, and behind those Il Rodoto, Cool Cody, So Scottish, Celeb Dalen, and Marvel de Cerisi. Seddon at 20 to 1 beats Fugitive at 11 to 1. Shake him up, Harry was third at 16 to 1. Jevry 125 to 1 in fourth, 23 ran. Thoroughly competitive. Handicap chase, which goes to Seddon, who's improving at a rate of knots since joining the John McConnell yard in Ireland. He's won his last three. He's surging up the handicap, but it's not stopping him win. This was a big step up in grade for him. He was always prominent, and he's run out a ready enough winner from Fugitive, Shake Up Harry, and Jevry storming home up the hill for fourth. Ben Harvey has just ridden his first festival winner on the Magnus Plate on Seddon. Many congratulations and how did you just describe the feeling to me? It's, it's class. Class is the only word to describe it, I think. Um, yeah, I just got, I had a dream run around and I can't believe it. Talk me through that dream run. Jumped off exactly where I wanted to be, winged the first, left me in the position I wanted to be. I was a little bit worried about Cool Cody jumping right. I had a job getting Seddon back just to try and keep him out, stop it. Cody interfering with me but um, when I came down the hill it was just trying not to get resisting the urges of kicking too soon and, <laughs> and hold on to him as long as I could and he picked up again up the hill and he hit the line really well and uh, he, he was brilliant now. 
well resisted, well resisted. And John McConnell, it's great that he's got his first festival winner, many winners here at Cheltenham. But after Marla Mission, I suppose, on Tuesday, he was starting to think it wasn't going to happen, and you've delivered it for him. Yeah, yeah, look, John's been a huge part of my career, and I'm so lucky to have ridden his first Cheltenham winner and mine, and uh, I can't thank him enough for everything he's done for me. He's a genius. Tell me about your background. My family would have always been into horses, and my granddad trained, and my dad rode a little bit, and we keep a few horses at home and that. And John's my local trainer, he's only 10 minutes from me, so I've been with him since I was 14, and he's, he's taught me nearly everything I know, and I can't thank him enough. So did you start just going in at weekends in the mornings and just helping out in a group from there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, my par parents are great, I'm great support from my whole family. They've driven me all over the country, you know, and to get me here today and I can't thank everyone enough. We're hearing that from lots of young jockeys, you know, the parents really do put the work in to help you achieve in the way that you have now. And now you're at the pinnacle with the festival winner. Have you dreamed about this moment? Yeah, yeah, this is this is what I've been dreaming of my whole life. So uh, I can't quite believe that it's just happened. And it's your fourth ride of the week and, you know, it's just so tough out there, isn't it? You know, just to get into the frame, let alone get into the winner's enclosure. Yeah, look, I had some nice rides yesterday and then in the pretense today and they just didn't really fire for me. and. Uh, I was starting to think it wasn't really going to happen, but uh, no, it was, I can't believe that's just happened now. <laughs> well, it definitely has. I can confirm. I hope it's the first of many. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. And John McConnell has absolutely loved that and, and receiving plaudits from all around. Uh, what does that mean to you? Oh, the world, to be honest. Um, what a horse. Uh, what a ride by Ben. And um, obviously we had a bit of bad luck on Tuesday. Mm. These things happen, but uh, for the first 10 seconds after Hello. the... Thank you. After the... The fall on Tuesday, I said, we're never going to have a Cheltenham winner, so to get it so quick. And a beautiful ride from Ben. Amy does all the work with him at home. She's brilliant on him. And um, just thrilled the whole team, worked so hard. We've nine winners in Dundalk tonight, and uh, they're all, the rest of them are all there, so it's all uh, their hard work. I do nothing except tell them how many laps to do, so, you know, um, it's great. It's such a big week, John. When things go against you, is it is it difficult to sort of puff your cheeks out and go again? Well, it is when you don't have a lot of guns to fire. We had only seven horses over, so he definitely is. And we always believed in the horse, but his price, people, you know, we couldn't believe he was 20, 28 to 1 at one stage. Uh, you know, he's done nothing wrong for us. And uh, he's just, yeah, I don't know. He's just, uh, he's an amazing horse, the most beautiful, kindest horse you could ever have, mm. as, uh, on top of being a very good horse, you know, so. Unbelievable. I was speaking to Tony Martin earlier and he was talking about young Irish jockeys and he said this Ben Harvey fella knows what he's doing. Ben is, it's like robbing five pounds. He's not going to have it too long, I can tell you that. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, he's just a star of the future. He's absolutely clocking his head, uh, can see strides from a mile back. Um, yeah, he's, he's top drawer. He's going to be a top, top jockey. What were you thinking watching him, watching Seddon on the way around? Yeah, I was very happy with him. Everything was going good. He jumped, you know, he jumped great. And um, I was just hoping he'd get up the hill. He got up the hill in October over hurdles on quick ground, but it's a bit, bit different in March on slower ground. But uh, he's like, he picked up well. And what a horse, just an amazing horse, you know. So, delighted. It's some team you've amassed to come here. Yeah, I mean, we said we had chances and uh, things haven't gone right. The, the bumper horse yesterday, the ground went for him. And, Fender Cross is going to run respectably and made a bad mistake, and then obviously Manor Mission. So it's nice that something goes our way, you know. But um, it's no fluke about this horse. He's a he's a proper horse. He was a, a very good horse in his in his youth, you know. And uh, I don't know what I don't know what, how he's been rejuvenated, but he's he certainly you know has been. Well, you and your team, well done, Eric. Thank you. Cheers. It's another Tattersall's National Hunt winner. Another Irish bred Cheltenham Festival winner. Contact Irish Thoroughbred Marketing to find yours. The Jack de Bromhead Mayor's Novices Hurdle was next, over two miles and one furlong. The Nicky Henderson trained with cheer was the six to four favourite ahead of Lot of Joy and Foxy Girl. And they're off. Away they go for this Jack de Bromhead Mayor's Novices Hurdle. And on the inside, Lot of Joy going on with You Wear It Well, Lucia. And wider out is Endless Escape. Very fluent jump from You Wear It Well at the first. Takes her into the lead now. From uh, on the near side, Endless Escape. From far side, Lot of Joy. In the centre between those is Lucia. 
Uh, they are tracked then by Poetic Music, Jatara in the bright orange colours, Yellow Sleeves, She Could Be Anything, and Lady Bank. Behind them still Ciel and a horse with no name up the inside. Princess Zoe a little wider out and a red cap, light blue jacket on the outside. Halka to Taber, followed by Under Control, Belle the Lioness, and then the Model Kingdom. Further back to Inspiratrice and uh, towards the rear, Bantown Girl in white sleeves. Magical Zoe on the outside with Foxy Girl. And Mullenbeg is just about the back marker under Harry Cobden. At flight number two, you wear it well over in front by about a length and a half to Endless Escape. And the favourite, Lucia, who's just third. Then Lot of Joy in fourth on the inside, followed by Jetara. And they are trapped by Poetic Music and She Could Be Anything from Still Ciel. Then on the outside, Halka to Taber from Lady Bank and Princess Zoe. Nikini is wide then of under control from Belle the Lioness. And then towards the inside, the Model Kingdom. Further back to Magical Zoe in the rear of the field within Spiratrice and Bantown Girl. And two or three lengths last is Mullenbeg. On down the back straight now and on towards the third flight, the third of eight. And you wear it well. Comes into this one, jumps it well again. From on the outside, Endless Escape. Lucia remains close up. Lot of Joy on the inside is fourth. Then uh, she could be anything. And Jetara, Halka de Taber. On the inside is Poetic Music. Out wide, a foxy girl getting a little closer. From Lady Bank and Nikini, Princess Zoe. Then still CL and Belle the Lioness and a horse with no name who has lost a few places. Followed by Magical Zoe, Mullenbeck towards the back with Inspiratrice and the Model Kingdom and Bantown Girl. Heading now left-handed going up the hill and You Wear It Well continues to lead the way. From Endless Escape in second, Lucia is third, and then on the outside in fourth is should, She Could Be Anything. On the inside is Lot of Joy, with every chance at this stage, just four or five lengths off the pace from Jatara, and then Foxy Girl as they jump that one, Halka to Taber, and then Poetic Music behind those, Princess Zoe is in about 10th uh, place, probably Lady Bank Nikini. Further back to Bell the Lioness on the outside of Still CL as now they reach the top of the hill and begin the left-hand turn downwards. And it is still You Wear It Well that continues to lead from Lucia and Endless Escape. She could be anything on the outside. Lot of Joy Jatara. Foxy Girl is close up with How Could a Tear Bear in the red cap. Behind those is Princess Zoe. Still CL on the inside. And then Belle the Lioness from Nikini. Under control with work to do. Magical Zoe, a horse with no name. Coming wide in maroon. None wider than Inspiratrice as they jump the second last. And You Wear It Well is taken on by Endless Escape in second. Lucia is in the slipstream. And then out wide, She Could Be Anything is putting in a, a really big challenge now. A lot of joy on the inside from Jetara and Foxy Girl. The long, long run down to the final flight. And still, You Wear It Well leads the way under Gavin Sheehan. Chased by Endless escape. Lucia has now popped the question by Nico de Boinville. Lot of joy on the far side. She could be anything then Foxy Girl. Princess Zoe and how could a tab here running on with Magical Zoe. You wear it well is holding them all at bay at the moment as they face up to the hill in the final flight. You wear it well by two, three lengths to Lucia who seems to be beaten off then running on how could a tab here. A mistake by Princess Zoe. Running on Magical Zoe. You wear it well by three lengths still and storming up the hill. You wear it well has been on the shop and all the way and a real gallant display to win the Jack de Bromhead Mayor's Hurdle. Magical Zoe staying on to snatch second from Halka de Taber, then Princess Zoe who made a mistake at the last Lucia and behind those she could be anything. You wear it well repels the Irish Raiders and wins at 16 to 1 for Gavin Sheen and Jamie Snowden. Magical Zoe second at 15 to 2 and Halka de Taber was third and that one was 12 to 1, 21 round. Well, this winner is a game tough and consistent mare. She'd run very well in the Challow and finishing second uh, to Hermes Allen here. She was always prominent. And while she stays this trip well, she is not short of speed at all. And uh, she held on from the Henry Bromhead trained uh, Magical Zoe, who rattled home from some way back. And Gavin Sheen has given a lovely ride to you wear it well to win the Jack de Bomberhead Mayor's Novices Hurdle. Congratulations. She got, seemed to get in a lovely rhythm with her up front. Yeah, she's, um, I love her. She, she, she's, she's one of those. I uh, went down, winged the first, and she actually tanked for the first furlong and a half. And then all of a sudden I thought there was some, something else going to come with me. Plan was go forward, 
and if something else is going on, which I was kind of half hoping because she did prick her ears the last time when I wrote her. Um, but it was just, to be honest, it's a poetry in motion. The whole ways I could go down wing, I could go down fill her up. I think it was last and down the back where I just got to go right into the boards, fill up before we went up the hill, wing, wing, wing the third last, and then coming down the hill, I was like, we're on a stayer, so I kind of need to kind of get the ball rolling a small bit. Something came to me on my outside, and her ears just went flat back, and she just says, come on. She almost sticks out her chest, but that was a long ways to the winning line from turning in. And I was like, something going to do me. Um, but no, she's brilliant. Um, it's massive for the team and every, everybody. And um, yeah, no, it's just, she, she, she's brilliant. She's just a diamond. She's Kate, who rides her out at home, has, I promise you, done a brilliant job because she's not easy at home. Really? Oh, she, she, she could do anything. You know, schooling her is just a bit of a nightmare because she'd rear up, she'd do anything. She could. Um, but then when you take her to jump, jump her hurdles, she's class because she just focuses on her job. But. I know then on the way home, I don't have to ride her out because I meet her up, Jamie up in the school ground. Kate has to ride her home and I know she's got her hands full with her, but um, <laughs> she's done a brilliant job. Jamie's done a fr- brilliant job and it's, you know, I'm just delighted to get one for, for Chips as well, who's a massive, massive supporter um, of Jamie and myself. And, um, you know, he, he's just the nicest man and, you know, it's just brilliant. And yeah, I was getting a cold sweat. But as soon as I went past the winning line, I was going to get that cold sweat feeling where, as it happened. Yes. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I did really, really fancy her and... Um, yeah, when I went past the winning lady, you get the cold sweat, the buzz, and everything so no, is brilliant. And it's your third festival win, isn't it? Cole Hart, and of course, simply the bets. Yeah. But this sounds like it was it was dreamlike almost. It was. It was just one of those. I, I was very confident with her beforehand. You know, that's all right, Gina. We still had the ground to. That was. A, will you handle it? You know, he's a bigger, stronger horse. Will you handle it? Um, but yeah, I, I three three bullets to fire this year. They were all today. Um, there's a couple of lads that came over to watch me and uh, yeah, they, they, they went back in the flight tonight when I was oh, only no. coming today so I, I said I'd give them a mention so now they have their mention but they're going back in their flight but yeah I had a couple of bullets to fire they were all today and one out of three and you know it's just it's massive to get it done and you know Jamie's obviously a big supporter of mine and it's just great to reward him and everything. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely, absolutely great to see. What do you think this mare could be? She's obviously very talented. She is very talented. Um, I must say, I didn't want her to run the last day. I wanted her to come straight here fresh. Um, Jamie just thought she, she's hardy type. She's she's solid. She's what she, you know, she gives her all. Um, you know, I don't, I don't even think today you've seen the best of her. She, you've probably seen the best of her till two out, but I think if something else kind of come come with me, she would have went on again. Um, I wanted a fresh horse, but she went down the Love Love Envoy um, route, and um, yeah, uh, then I wouldn't mind having a crack over in Fairy House now next, and yes. for the Grade One over there. Yeah, well, you mentioned Love Envoy, and then on maybe to the Mayor's Hurdle this time next year, and she ran a huge race there. Would she be the kind of horse that would enjoy that two and a half mile trip as well, back up? Yeah, I mean, she she won over two and a half last time, but yeah. I was kind of you know, Chips and um, Jamie were having the discussion, and you know, Chips said that he, he'd love uh, love to win the Albert Bartlett. Um, but I just thought that she still has enough speed and um, he just said, right, well, you're riding her and Jamie trains her, so he said, I'll, I'll shut up then. Um, <laughs> but I, I still, I was adamant that she still got enough speed and today, the Thursday, being on the, the I don't know, is it the newer old, but the more staying, the more staying track, um, you've only got, you know, you, you've probably got six six furlings and you've only got like, you know, two, three hurdles to jump. Um, you know, it, it does, it comes into more staying and she definitely does stay, but I still think she's got enough speed. So she's classy and, I keep it improving. I can see how much you love her. I can see why you like her so much. Many congratulations, Gavin. We're really I, pleased I for you. I love Cheltenham, riding winners of Cheltenham. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. Well done. Thanks very much. So Chips Keswick is the proud owner of You Wear It Well, who's just won the Jack de Bromhead Mayor's Novices Hurdle. Many congratulations. Thank you very much. Your second winner at the Cheltenham Festival, but one you were actually present to see. That must be very sweet. I was away last time, so it's wonderful ten years later. I'm thrilled. <laughs> And that, that's when you were chairman of Arsenal. You had to go to Bayern Munich, I hear. I did, and they beat us 4-1. It wasn't very good. <laughs> Just to put the tin lid on it. <laughs> but this, this, this mare looks very, very special. I think she is. She's got... She, she, don't pat her, she'll bite you. <laughs> is, is that what she's like? Yeah, but she's lovely, but she bites. <laughs> and had Jamie given you confidence that she would run really well? Jamie and I are very close, and... Uh, we never discuss the result beforehand. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Scottish answer. <laughs> <laughs> and what were you thinking as you were watching the race? Come on, you beauty. <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting to have a, a young horse who's as good as this. Well, I know. You can't believe it, really. I have a lot of horses, and she's the nicest.
So there we are. And it's <laughs> tremendous for Jamie to bring you two festival winners. I mean, people dream of that. I know. I haven't slept for a week. I'm a noted leader. Now. <laughs> and beautiful, beautifully ridden as well by Gavin Sheehan. Yeah, he rides them always. And it's, 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 he makes it fun too. When he falls off, we both laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a lovely story. Many congratulations. And much. I wish you the best of luck with her well, with the rest of her you, career. Thank you for your friendship. It thank was you. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. The Foot Wall Win Kim Muir Challenge Cup chase was next. Amateur jockeys in action here over three and a quarter miles. And the favourite was Stumped Town at seven to two. And he's let them go, they're away. Royal Thief was very much on his toes, but has been allowed to jump off with him. Emir Sacre to the full with Bally Keel in the white jacket. Stumptown is handy, and so too punitive on the inside. They're all safely over the first with Musical Slave, the back marker. On quickly to the second with two circuits ahead of them. Emir Sacre now joined by Dr. Kananga in the yellow cap. They're followed by Bally Keel on the inside, punitive, wide route, Royal Thief and Beauport. Then Deffy Blur with uh, Didero Vallis out wide. Rapper is just behind those in green and red, followed by Faraday, one of the greys. Stumptown on the inside of Annual Invictus from Angel's Dawn and then Cursor Ren and Lord Accord and Western Zara and Dunboyne round the inside. Mr. Incredible, Kustar Sibler, Fontaine Colonge is well back in the early stages together with a Knight in Lambourne Slipway and Musical Slave on the inside at this plain fence. So seeing them over it, they're safely to the other side and now on towards the water jump. Emir Sacre and the white blazed Dr. Kananga as they come in to take this one. Mr. Incredible, just looking for Mr. Incredible, right out the back in the light blue jacket under Patrick Mullins at this stage, but uh, is at least with them. Uh, in third is Didero Vallis, and then on the outside, Royal Thief is a jump and open ditch. Defi Blur is close up, Bally Keel on the inside, then Rapper. Beauport remains out wide, Faraday, Angels, Dawn, and Punitive. Then Western Zara over the next plane fence. Dr. Kananga jumping into Emir Sacre there. There's still all standing by the look of it with Kustar Silver at the back, a musical slave likewise. And then a knight in Lambourne and Slipway also to the back with Lord Accord. Now an open ditch and Dr. Kananga picks up in front this time from Emir Sacre in second place. Then uh, behind them is Didero Vallis and Royal Thief with Beauport on the outside. Deffy Blur is right there with them as well with Bally Keel as they jump a plain fence. Then Faraday. Rapper, Angel's Dawn, and then Punitive on the inside as they now swing left-handed. Back behind these annual Invectors, probably about uh, 12th at the moment from Stumptown, Green Jacket, 13th on the inside. Western Zara and Cursorena, they jump the fence at the top of the hill. At the back, Dunboyne had a collision there with Cursorena. And uh, behind them still Fontaine Collange and Knight in Lambourne. Mr. Incredible on the inside, followed up the inside by Musical Slave. Kustar Slippers right out the back. Lord Accord seems to be struggling and Slipways not got near them at the moment as they run over the next fence. And over this one, it was Dr. Kananga that leads the way to Emir Sacre in second. Darren Andrews on Dr. Kananga from Emir Sacre in second place as they run towards this term. Uh, Didero Vallis is right there on the outside under Lucy Turner, followed by in the blue cap then Deffy Blur. And they are followed by Bally Keel towards the inside and then out wider is Royal Thief in the maroon cap. Followed by Punitive and then Faraday and uh, towards the inside Annual Invictus out wide is Beauport still. As they jump that one, a, a blunder there from Royal Thief. Back in the field is Stumptown about midfield. They're quite well strung out behind. Lord Accord is being pulled up. Uh, Cursor Ren. Western Zara still out the back. Dunboyne is well back at this stage. Mr. Incredible quietly ridden round the inside from a knight in Lambourne. Fontaine Collange and then musical slave Kustar Sebler is still going and so too is Slipway. Heading to the back straight though is Dr. Kananga 1. Emir Sacre in second place. In third is Deffy Blur. Didero Vallis in fourth on the outside of Bally Keel. Then punitive towards the inside from Faraday and then Royal Thief and Annual Invictus and Stumptown. They're followed by Beauport and Angel's Dawn. Towards the outside of those is Western Zara, the grey, followed by Dumboy and a Mr. Incredible as they jump the flame fence going 
out into the back straight. Then on the inside, with lots to do, is Musical Slave just being pushed along. So too is Cursor Wren from behind those wrapper. And then Fontaine, Collange, and Coustal Civler as they jump the water jump. One of the two leaders put one foot in the water there. It looked as though Emir Sacre didn't land too well. It might have been him on towards the open ditch. And it's Dr. Kananga from Emir Sacre. One and two still over this one. Emir Sacre didn't jump that too well. Bally Keel on the inside of Deffy Blur. A royal thief is there. Beauport's always been handy on the outside as they move on towards the next plane fence. And Dr. Kananga, another mistake from Emir Sacre. Uh, one or two of them getting pretty remote. Kustal Sibla slipway the, at the back as they swing on left-handed, going up the hill towards this final open ditch. Dr. Kananga, Emir Sacre, Royal Thief, Deffy Blur, Beauport on the outside, Bally Keel, Annual Invictus getting a bit closer. So too Western Zara from Angel's Dawn. Stumptown is not far behind them now. And a Knight in Lambourne is improving with Dumb Boyne as well as they race on towards the next plane fence. And it's very competitive up front with coming through Royal Thief, maybe just shading it. Dr. Kananga on the inside. And Beauport right there on the outside. Emir Sacre still in touch as they round this top turn. Western Zara. They're followed by Deffy Blur. Then Stumptown and Angels Dawn out wide over four out. Annual Invictus, Mr. Incredible, trying to get back into it as well as they now start running down the hill with three fences left to jump. And coming through is Royal Thief. Royal Thief is taking it up narrowly from Mr. Incredible uh, behind runners. Beauport right there in the firing line, Western Zara. Out very wide is Angel's Dawn over the third last. Deffy Blur in the blue cap. Dr. Kananga fading. Stumptown is just chasing up the leaders. The green jacket with the yellow stars from Bally Keel and Dumboyne is running on well from Annual Invictus and Mr. Incredible. They run into the final turn. Royal Three Thief and Western Zara. These two turners won, but Angel's Dawn looking dangerous. So too is Stumptown they're followed by Deffy, Blur and Beauport. Switching to the inside is Stumptown. Going towards the second last. Angels, Dawn, Western Zara. These two together. Joined by Stumptown on the far side. Royal Thief behind these. Dumboyne and Mr. Incredible is beginning a charge from the back in the light blue jacket. Angels, Dawn comes to the last. Over in front of Stumptown. Here's Mr. Incredible gaining in third from Dumboyne. Up the hill. Angels, Dawn on the near side of Stumptown. Mr. Incredible's run is petering out. Stumptown rallying, far side of Angel's Dawn. They go head and head all the way to the line. Angel's Dawn on the near side has got it. Angel's Dawn from Stumptown in second. Back in third, Mr. Incredible. Then Dumbo in fourth. Angel's Dawn at 10 to 1 beats Stumptown, the 7 to 2 favourite. Mr. Incredible third at 4 to 1. Dumbo in fourth, an 8 to 1 shot. Well, Angel's Dawn travelled very strongly uh, through this contest, could be seen. Hard on the bridle uh, turning for home, but really had to battle to get past the favourite at Stumptown, who rallied against the rail. They came quite close together, but the stewards did not uh, have a look at to what happened. Mr. Incredible, well, he was surging home before a bad mistake at the last, and you thought, bar that, he would have been involved. But it's Angel's Dawn, who was perhaps a bit unlucky last time up, who makes amends here. Uh, Sam Curlin's alongside me. Actually, one of the first people to come over and congratulate you was, was Gavin Cromwell. Yeah. Um, you must be absolutely delighted. Delighted, over the moon. Um, geez, I don't know what to say. It's brilliant, brilliant. We're only a small team. About six or seven horses for the track, mostly putting the pointers. So, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. She's been a very unlucky mare, you know. She's, she was unlucky the last day and unlucky a few times over hurdles, but she's always had the class. So, brilliant, brilliant for the team at home and for packing. He rides a lot of our point of pointers. He gave him a, a horror, brilliant ride. So, delighted. He's got that absolutely spot on, hasn't he? Sat, sat absolutely motionless, and then all of a sudden, yeah. you must have thought we're up against it. Here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, they, uh, the other horse was coming. She's very tough. She always has been, and the, 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 the trip suits her well. So, uh, no, it's brilliant. Thank you. Um, just, just tell me how far out this this plan was formulated to come for the Kim Yu. Um, it was uh, the, the main aim this year was to try and go for the testers, and she missed getting into that. So. Uh, it was this or the Midlands National after that, so uh, yeah. there was only one Cheltenham, so we said we'd come here. Yeah. Saturday's probably going to come too quick, isn't yeah. it? Um, what's, what's it like bringing, you say you've got a very small team, you, you, you bring a horse here, look, with a, you know, a 10 to 1 shot, but up against the big guns, and as you say, there's not many of you at home, it, it, how, how difficult a task has it been? I don't know, it wasn't, it wasn't that difficult, it was, uh, it was brilliant. Uh, 
just to be able to come, you know, with a, with a runner with a chance was brilliant. So, uh, no, I'm delighted. I'm delighted for all the team at home. You know, they do a great job. And uh, like we saw in Marine National, that's our job, you know, selling horses. We produce horses. And, uh, but it's great to keep one or two like this. Yeah, so. You produce that horse? Yeah, Marine National. We sold him before he ran. So, uh, no, it was great. Oh, that, I mean, that's that's incredible. Did you get a buzz seeing him do that earlier on in the week? You would do, yeah. It's, it's bigger buzz out of that, you know. That's our job, you know, selling horses, so it's brilliant, you know. And the odd, the odd Cheltenham Festival when it helps just a bit, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, that's great, yeah. Thanks very much. Uh, just, just tell us who looks after the horse at home. Uh, Karina, Karina Bow looks after her. She's leading them up there, and Liam Kelly does... The head man does a great job and we actually we actually stabled them in Tom and Jean Ellis's for the last few days so they were great, very accommodating and uh, no it's great, brilliant. So I'm delighted for you, welcome. Thank you very much, thank you. And the leading jockeys after three days of this year's Cheltenham Festival is Paul Townend with three winners, he's got a couple of seconds to his name as well. Two winners for Rachel Blackmore and Michael O'Sullivan, all the others quoted there with a winner apiece. As far as the leading trainer is concerned, well yes you guessed it, it's Willie Mullins with four winners, five seconds and seven thirds to his name. Gordon Elliott's got three winners and a nine placed horses. And there's also three winners for Henry de Bromet, who's got a couple of second places and one winner apiece for others quoted there. And finally, the Presbury Cup, the standings after day three. Well, Great Britain have uh, racked up six winners now over the three days of this year's festival. But Ireland well in the lead with 15 winners. So that draws to a close. And Patrick's Thursday here at the Cheltenham Festival. Dan Barber and Don McLean alongside to review what we've seen today. And if Stage Star wasn't a surprise winner of the opening race, it was not the most anticipated winner, uh, Dan Barber. And it gave Paul Nichols an end to that over 50 runner losing streak at the festival. Huge relief for him. Good jumping performance under Harry Cobb. You know, it's, it must be so weird for Nichols because for the rest of the season, he is the dominant force. and. It hasn't been a successful time for him at the Cheltenham Festival, whichever way you, you want to pull it apart. And he had a pretty miserable day on the Wednesday. Tuesday possibly could have gone better as well, but that will have meant a lot. And I think it did say a lot about Cobden's temperament. Spurred on by Nichols giving him the positive instruction, just go out and ride, try and make all. And he punished them because they gave him too soft a lead. Uh, there was no soft lead at all for the winner of the, the Thames final, Good Time Johnny, because it was another standing start and he kind of got the worst of it. He's a hold up horse anyway, but Liam McKenna, his young rider, first festival winner for him, must have thought, well, this just isn't happening at any stage of the race, but the turbo boost kicked in between the two out and the last, the long run on the new course, and Tony Martin, Don, his first festival winner since 2015. He used to be one a, one a year, pretty much. Yeah, no, I look, it was a very good performance in the end by Good Time Johnny. And Liam McKenna, like, things didn't happen for him. He missed the start, he was in behind, he kept jumping to his right, he missed probably half the flights of hurdles. And he was, what, 15, 16, turning for home. But just as Liam McKenna did in the Galway hurdle for Tony Martin as well, he kept to the inside, kept to the plan, got his momentum up in the home straight and stayed towards the far side, which, as it turned out, wasn't a, di a disadvantage as it often is on the on the course and when the when the rain gets into it. But Good Time Johnny just stayed on really well in the, in the end. He won by five or six lengths. No, fantastic performance. Amazing performance. Good to see Tony Martin back. Absolutely, because he's been swamped by the preeminent other Irish trainers in recent times, the likes of Mullins and Elliot, but showing he can still do it. And you just don't expect festival handicaps, the most competitive handicaps that we see all year on either side of the Irish Sea, to be won when so little has gone right. And we saw in the big race today, one of the big races, how even the best can get unsettled by things not going right. Hey, so for exactly. him to win, he must have passed 20 in the straight. And that best was Shishkin, who finished second in the Ryan area. When you mentioned the big Irish trainers, Mullins Elliot, De Bromhead, and who can get horses to peak like nobody else at the festival? It's him, it's Henry De Bromhead, Honeysuckle, Mascada, Envoy Allen now. A look at Envoy Allen's festival record, winner of the Bumper 19, winner of the Ballymore 20, hailed as a hero, left Gordon Elliot, 21, fell early on in the turn, has came back last year, decent third in the champion chase, now wins the Ryanair. Still a youngish horse for a veteran. Yeah, exactly, nine years old now, and I suppose he's still just getting there, isn't he? Because his 
first run this season was in the Champion Chase at Down Royal. It was his first run over three miles, and he saw it out well, probably just about saw it out and won well. Then he went to the King George and was well fancy. And even Henry de Bromhead was telling Lydia that he still couldn't figure out what happened to the King George because it just didn't mm. per perform at all. And maybe Kempton can, can do that to horses with the pace that they go. But back here today, Rachel Blackmore on board. He travelled, didn't he? He travelled so well through his race. He was maybe a wee bit keen, even if anything, throughout the early stages of the race. But Rachel just sat on him, allowed him into the race, allowed him get there. Didn't go for him at all until after the last. And when she did, as you say, the champion bumper up the hill, the Ballymore mm -hmm. hurdle up the hill. He loves this hill. He sees out this trip and extended two and a half miles really well. And he's, he's a classy horse. And everybody knew, Dan Barber, that the finish of the stayers hurdle <laughs> would be fought out by Cider Burley and by Dashiell Drasher. Dashiell Drasher was subsequently demoted from second place, which in the end gave Gordon Elliott a 1-2, but not in the order he expected, and rather like Envoy Allen, all the hail a festival regular side of early, two attempts, a second in the stairs before. He's had a bizarre Chelsea mm. Festival record, but a glorious one. But brought back to the boil perfectly, the first two, couple of runs this season looked really lifeless, and I was thinking in the back of my mind, has that massive run at Aintree on a veteran horse really taken out? Because they, they had a war in the Aintree stayers hurdle last season. He's bounced back. Stamina has always been his strong suit. The Potemps he was winning, he wasn't gliding through these races and sprinting away. It was all hard work. Who, who could forget the Geraghty ride on him that year? But if that's five festivals, Potemps last season, based on Aintree and what he did today, he'd have won three of those because I don't think third win would have been able to stop him last season had he not merely been wiped out early on. Between Ogwa Allen and Side of Burley, six festival triumphs. Remarkable. The first festival triumph for John McConnell. Might have been his second had Marla Mission not tipped up a couple of days ago. He thought he'd never get one. It came in the shape of Seddon, horse formerly trained by Tom George, but for the second day, once trained in England, goes to Ireland, comes back to England, wins festival race. Yeah, he was very good, Nick, and look, he'd been really good at Leopardstown. He had the race won at halfway at Leopardstown the last day. He got a fair hike from the handicap for that. Ben Harvey, who just turned professional this year, I think Seddon was his second winning ride as a professional. He was very good on him again, got him into his rhythm. And whenever he was challenged by Fugitive on the run to the last, you kind of thought Fugitive was getting there with, the, with momentum up. But Seddon had a little bit in hand and he stayed on really strongly. Brilliant for John McConnell to say Mallor Mission fell when we're not... No, we don't know for sure, but he possibly stroke, probably would have won. And for him to come back two days later and go and get his first Shetland Festival winner on the board, brilliant. Jamie Snowden with a festival winner in the same colours as his previous one, Present View. This time it was You Wear It Well in the colours of Sir Chips Keswick for Gavin Sheehan. Lovely mare and really the, the world at her feet now. Yeah, precisely that. The scope for fences. Mares have been a fine advert, as you said, Nick, about what they can do in handicaps when they've got the toughness and the durability and the attitude for it. And her professionalism, I think, was the thing that set her apart. She was chased by Lucia throughout, but they were poles apart in terms of settling. She settled beautifully in the lead, and as you were saying to us off-air during the race, she's not going to stop. No. Um, Magical Zoe came from a long way back, beat everything that she was entitled to from so far off the pace but I don't think they really banked on the fact that you wear it well would keep galloping and she's a smashing prospect for short and long term. Angel's Dawn won the final race for Sam Curling and it, it, it's set us up beautifully for tomorrow for Gold Cup Day. Now the way these De Bromhead horses have been going Don, <laughs> Aplutar is going to tighten and tighten from now to the race isn't he? I think so, I think so like Look, Henry de Rumhead, he's a top class trainer. The champion that he had here a couple of years ago, he's he, he's won the champion hurdle, the champion chase and the gold cup in the same year. The only trainer ever to have done that. He's won the last, before this year, the last two champion hurdles, the last two gold cups with two different horses, first and second in both years. And that who tired tomorrow. Yeah, look, it's, it's an un unorthodox preparation. But the vibes coming from the yard are quite positive, man. No one's even mentioned Manella Rindo, who has won this race before. Galapan de Chant, of course, will be favourite to beat the pair for Willie Mullins, who extraordinarily didn't have a winner today. But again, it was a day of Irish domination on St. Patrick's Thursday. On Wallen, not completely impossible. Sia de Burle, a little harder to fathom on the day that's been a little tough for quite a lot of punters and where the book's bit back. From Dan, from Don, from me, from everybody here at Cheltenham, it's good night. We'll see you tomorrow for the Blue Ribbons. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.